matter? I was returning home from a girl. It was about two o'clock in the morning. It was dark and damp around. The road to my house passes through an abandoned orphanage. When I heard the baby crying, I was a little drunk, so I was almost not scared. But there was a desire to help the child, at least to find out what was the matter. I went into the building. There were scattered old children's toys and broken furniture that the homeless had not yet had time to disassemble. The crying was clearly audible. I went around the whole building. I didn't find anyone, but the sound continued. I was about to leave and suddenly noticed the stairs to the second floor. There was a door under it. Meanwhile, the crying was getting stronger. I tried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Going around, I found a piece of pipe and knocked out the lock. It was damp inside and everything was covered in mold. Shining the phone, I saw a small mirror in the corner. The crying seemed to come from in. I got closer, and then everything went quiet. Shining the phone, I saw a painted figure in the form of a ladder in the mirror. I decided to leave because it suddenly became creepy and somehow uncomfortable. Then suddenly I heard a whisper, but I couldn't make out anything. I didn't know what to do and decided to run away. When I ran out of the doors of the orphanage, I could already clearly hear the cries for help. Then a taxi pulled out from the next street. I ran out onto the road and stopped it. The taxi driver immediately asked about the screams, which he heard as well as I did. I said that I had to leave here urgently, that something unhealthy was happening here. I was very scared, and he saw it. I got into the car and we drove off. I calmed down, lit a cigarette, cursing myself for going to this orphanage at all. And then I looked in the side view mirror and saw a staircase painted on it. It was somehow faded. I immediately asked the taxi driver if he could see it. For some reason, he was very scared, stopped the car and tried to wipe it, but he didn't succeed. He drove me home, and as we drove, the stairs became clearer and indistinct whispers became audible. The taxi driver slammed on the brakes so that I hit my forehead on the car's torpedo. Suddenly, he started shouting at me wildly to get out of the car. I did it because I was horrified and shocked by what had happened. He left immediately, and I ran home. In the morning I woke up from a headache, memories of last night immediately surfaced. I was afraid to go to the bathroom and look in the mirror, but then I decided. There was nothing in the mirror, I relaxed, told my friends, they laughed, and I myself began to perceive it in a comic form. That evening I came back from bowling around one o'clock in the morning, went to the bathroom to wash and again heard a whisper and saw the stairs appear. I got scared and ran to my parents for the night, told them everything, they gave me a sedative, and I fell asleep. Everything was fine in the morning. My parents didn't believe me, I became very hot-tempered and aggressive. This lasted for about three days, the staircase, which only I saw, appeared again and again. Terrible cries for help, they did not give me peace, at times it seemed that I had gone mad. My parents took me to a psychiatrist, where they offered to put me in a clinic for examination. Nothing happened during this time. I became afraid of mirrors. Soon I was discharged with a diagnosis of nervous exhaustion. All my friends and even my girlfriend turned away from me, saying I was crazy. When I returned home, that same night I heard that whisper again and convinced my father to stand with me in the mirror in the hope that he, too, would hear or see something. We stood for about fifteen minutes, and he, unlike me, did not see or hear anything, and I watched as a ladder appeared and descended to the lower edge of the mirror. And the whispers for help became clearer and clearer. When the ladder reached the edge of the mirror, the mirror burst, and several fragments hit the father and cut his face. He was shocked and immediately believed me. All this time he took me to temples, churches, gypsies, grandmothers, fortune tellers, and even crossed me. But everything went on as usual. There are no mirrors left in our apartment. They are all broken. Many fortune tellers claim that a demon will come after me and tell me that my soul is doomed. I can't accept it. I don't know what to do. I'm looking for a way out. 
I want to live as before, but no one can help me yet. Floor mirror. Anyone who has an old cottage knows by what principle it is furnished. Bedside tables were found in the trash. A neighbor gave a buffet. Relatives gave a rusty refrigerator. The fragments of the bed were taken out of the house. Our dacha is a classic dacha. The same bedside tables, sideboard, rusty refrigerator, and creaky beds. And a floor mirror. Huge, two meters tall, very old and very black. Black, because if you move a little sideways, the surface will fade, stop reflecting and become black. The mirror was given to us by our own aunt. My aunt got it from a neighbor, a neighbor took it from her sister's apartment when she died. How the mirror got to the sister of our aunt's neighbor is unknown. We no longer remember when it started and from what. Only at some point did everyone realize that it was scary to spend the night in the house at the dacha. Sometimes it got very cold in the room at the height of the July heat. Strange sounds were heard, wheezing, grunting, moaning, sighing. Something can jump on your shoulders when you get up at night in need. Once it spent the whole night stomping up and down the stairs, going up and down from the first floor to the second and back. Up and down, up and down, all nerves on edge. The stepfather, armed with an axe, examined the whole house, no one, nothing. However, it was worth turning off the light at 25 again. I got into the habit of sleeping only by the light of a night light. But even this poor device got it, its plastic case crumbled with a monstrous crack. And one day, in the dead of night, we were all woken up by the terrible screams of our five-year-old daughter. She screamed and sobbed uncontrollably. The child was calmed down with difficulty, given to drink holy water. When everything calmed down more or less, we began to ask what scared her so much. And she said that at night a big cat came up to her and sat down at her feet. And that night this cat looked at her from the mirror and then jumped out of there from the mirror and rushed into her face. As soon as it started to get light, my husband and I picked up this mirror and slowly, on foot, carried to kilometers to the garbage dump. We carefully put him on the ground and quietly left. From that day on, the nighttime concert stopped. However, then smart people said that you can't leave the mirror like that. First, it was necessary to hold him for several hours in running water to wash away the negative energy of the terrible events that once affected him. Mirror, Emma and Grape's background. Two years ago, my friend bought a room in a communal apartment with her neighbor Solda. Talking to a friend on the phone, I found out that the neighbor is a harmless and not grumpy old lady, but differs in some oddities. She does not like to talk about herself. She immediately stopped her friend's attempts to take her under her protection. It's not worth it. Honey, to get into my friends, you're on your own. I'm on my own. If I need anything from you, I will notify you. And reduced communication to phrases necessary for living together. Nevertheless, a taciturn elderly lady very often and for a long time talks in her room. A friend decided that a solda, like many lonely people, has a habit of expressing her thoughts out loud, until one day she accidentally noticed that her grandmother was communicating with a mirror that hangs on the wall in her room. This year one had the opportunity to spend a few days in her city, which I had long dreamt of. After meeting with a friend, I found out that her neighbor died a year ago at the age of 89. The heir's distant relatives, though the old lady had no children, allowed her to buy an empty room, and now her friend has her own two room apartment in a good area, but so far without high quality repairs and with a bunch of junk, which the heirs were not tempted to. The junk was mostly stacked on the mezzanine, the old furniture had already been taken out to the trash, and a large mirror remained on the wall, which a friend could not remove, as it turned out to be tightly screwed to the frame with screws to the wall. To say that the mirror looked ugly is to say nothing. Once it was a chiffonier door there was even a lock tab on the side. Then someone tried to give a beautiful look to this door hanging on the wall, and artificial flowers were attached to the wooden frame. 
In short, I immediately itched my hands to make an exclusive thing out of junk, especially since, holding a burning match to the mirror, I saw five reflections of light, which spoke of a multi-layered amalgam and, undoubtedly, of ancient technology. The mirror glass was faceted, had a bluish tinge and was directly icy to the touch, despite the fact that the apartment was very warm, even hot. A friend gladly agreed to my design experiments. Knowing my passion for old things, she offered, if I wanted, to sort out the garbage on the mezzanine, where she had not yet looked due to lack of time, and, leaving me the keys to the apartment, left for three days on a business trip. The whole day I carried out the planned cultural program, visited several museums, and on the way home I dropped into the store, bought everything necessary for finishing the frame. I started work in the evening. I picked the flowers, polished the wood, and after midnight, tired, went to the next room to sleep. I went to bed, turned on the TV, the table lamp after all. I felt uncomfortable alone in someone else's apartment and realized that I didn't want to sleep at all. All sorts of unnecessary thoughts began to come into my head. I remembered Isolde, who was talking to the mirror. Suddenly, Like in a bad movie, the lights go out, the TV turns on, and I distinctly hear someone trying to open the front door with a key. Thank God, it wasn't completely dark in the room, otherwise I would have definitely suffered, because the mystical thoughts instantly left. The thought thieves came, and I, clutching the phone in my hand to call the police, rushed to the front door to shout, Who is there? There was no response. I decided to look through the peephole. On the landing, unlike the apartment, the light was on. But there was nothing near the door. After catching my breath, for some reason I sat down to look through the keyhole, and then I heard a quiet male voice, Emma. My hands and feet trembled from this voice. There was something strange, frightening, and at the same time very dreary, or something... It felt like a nightmare hands reaching out to you, but you can't move. If I had been lying in bed at that moment, I would have written off everything in the morning as sleep paralysis. But I was standing in the hallway in front of the door, and there was someone behind the door. And something had to be done. My speech, oddly enough, did not take away from me, and I tried to speak as loudly as possible. You made a mistake, and I is not here. Leave, or I'll call the police. And again I heard a sound. Someone ran his hand over the dermatan upholstery of the door. Then light footsteps down the stairs. I was looking through the peephole at that time. There was no one there. The view was sufficient. The flight of stairs was visible very well. Almost immediately, the lights came on and the TV turned on. I didn't sleep until dawn. I was watching TV, and the lights were on everywhere. Then I blacked out and slept until almost noon. I did some work on the frame. I decided to wrap a vine with berries around the mirror. It turned out very easily. The decoration just jumped out of my fingers. In the late afternoon I went for a walk through historical places. I think you can imagine how much I wanted to go back to the apartment to spend the night, so I was very pleased with the night in museum's campaign and spent time until dawn at the Water Museum with a crowd of people. Returning to the apartment, I slept for two hours, then finished the frame and decided to sort out the garbage on the mezzanine. Among the fragments of tiles, old and new remnants of wallpaper and other debris. To my joy, I found very curious things, a 1956 vacuum cleaner, in working condition, to cosnets of plates, very simple in appearance and therefore probably will not interest the heirs. A fibrous suitcase stuffed with books and photographs, and in in the farthest corner is a carefully wrapped roll of something after the plates. I thought there was no less than the original Rembrandt which I decided to explore after the suitcase. In the suitcase there were books in Russian and German, very old, issues 33 to 38. Two of them are original copies with flattering dedications to a solder. I really wanted to find out what the former owner of the apartment looked like, so I started sorting through the photos and reading the inscriptions on them. 
I dealt with a soul that quickly, in most of the photos there was the same woman in different poses, of different ages, quite recognizable. And then I had a studio photo in my hands. Two, absolutely identical girls were looking at her, in identical plaid dresses with lace collars. They differed only in their hairstyles, one had a parting on the right, the other on the left. And this photo was signed like this, to my reflection. Isolde from Emma, in honor of our coming of age, below is the date, October 21, 1938. Wow! Isolde, it turns out, had a twin sister. Why is she no longer with her sister in any of the photos among the rather impressive stack of subsequent shots? And then I remembered the incident of the night and the voice that was called Emma. What a coincidence! Further events unfolded even more interesting. When I took the wrapper off the roll and unwrapped it, I was shocked again. It was a piece of yellowed paper on which there was a rather romantic watercolor portrait of a young woman. Upon closer examination, I found a resemblance to the girls in the photo. But it wasn't the portrait that struck me far from Rembrandt. Art school, level, and the frame painted around it is an ornament, a vine with berries. The same thing I did around the mirror. One in one. Next to the image of the woman there were lines obliquely later I copied them to myself. Emma, I want to say goodbye. No one understood the heart. What can I say about his fainting? What? Do thoughts fly anxiously and coherently? Is the heart crying in the chest? The diamond stars will soon fall. Wait. In addition to this drawing, there were others in the scroll. Very finely, on pieces of cloth, with an ink pencil. I once saw similar ballpoint pen drawings on handkerchiefs. They were brought by a friend from place not so remote. The prisoners were painting. One of the drawings found depicted a sailing boat and a girl on the shore. Signature, wait for me, beloved Emma, and I'll be back. Your Frederick, it is obvious that both the drawing on paper and the drawings on the fabric were made by the same person. Maybe I have an immoderate imagination, but from the fragments of this mosaic in my head, a whole life with loneliness, death, love, which may not have ended in death, has developed. Where did Emma go? Died. It is clear that Isolde has lost her reflection, her twin, sister. Maybe, seeing herself in the mirror, she was talking to her sister, who was her mirror image in life. Maybe the sister came through the mirror from another world. Similar cases have been described here. Unlikely. Why didn't Isolde get married? Why didn't she want to share her memories with anyone? Why did Frederick go to prison? Was he repressed for some reason? It seems to me that he was not a banal criminal. What happened to him then? Had he visited Emma last night after all? These years? What for? Am I the reincarnation of Emma? And such a question, for some reason, rose in connection with the date of birth. Alas, there are many questions, but there is no one to get answers from. I had a feeling that I was destined to play a certain role in this story. Is it possible to put the last point? At night I slept peacefully, and in the morning I went to church and put candles for the repose of Isolde, Emma and Frederick. A friend is very proud of her updated mirror, shows it to all the guests. The events described above in the apartment did not frighten her at all. The things I found were delighted. She said, great. I love houses and apartments that have their own history. Leaving, I went to the mirror and touched it with my hand. The glass was worn. Maybe it should be continued.